Story 14 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kathy Reynolds, Albany, New York. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris. Story 14 Uncle Wiggily and the Watermelon. Well, asked the slow snail of Uncle Wiggily, as he met the old gentleman rabbit on the beach next day. Did you get any of your fortune at the fleas party? None at all, answered the old gentleman rabbit. There was plenty of gold and diamonds to be seen, but the fleas didn't give me any. Perhaps they forgot it, suggested the snail. Some of the fleas are very forgetful. I once knew one whose mother sent him to the store for a pound of sugar and a quart of milk, and what do you suppose he bought? I don't know, answered the rabbit, curious-like. He got a pound of milk and a quart of sugar, and the milk all ran out of the paper bag in which the grocery man put it, and the sugar stuck fast to the milk pail, and they had a dreadful time getting it out. That shows you what a flea will do sometimes. Perhaps if you ask them for your fortune, they will give it to you. I'll do it the next time I meet one, decided Uncle Wiggily. But now I must go on and look for myself. Wait until I sing a little song for you, said the slow snail. And he hummed this song very, very slowly. When I am in a hurry, I slowly crawl along. And when I finish crawling, I sing a little song. For if I hurry too much, I'd get there all too soon. Though some day I am going to climb up to the moon. And then when I get up there, I'll sleep the whole long day, or crawl upon the moonbeams, or jump into the hay. Ha hum! exclaimed Uncle Wiggily. That's a very good song, and I'm sure it will help me find my fortune. Now I must say goodbye and travel along. If you will wait, I'll come with you, spoke the snail. But then I suppose you are in a hurry, Uncle Wiggily and I go too slow for you. That's it, said the rabbit kindly, and he gave one big hop that carried him twice as far as the snail could travel in a week of Sundays without counting Christmas. Well, it wasn't very long after this before Uncle Wiggily got to the top of a hill. When he started to climb up from the bottom, he thought perhaps there might be gold at the top. But when he did get to the summit, all he found there was a big green thing with stripes on. I wonder what this can be, thought the rabbit. It looks like a baseball, and yet it's too large for that. And besides, it isn't quite round. And once more, it's green instead of white, for all baseballs are white. Ha! I know what it is. That must be a football which the boys kick about. I guess I'll kick it. Perhaps there may be gold inside. So he got ready to kick it, but you know how it is with old gentlemen rabbits who have the rheumatism and have to go about on a crutch. As soon as Uncle Wiggily lifted up one foot, the one that had no rheumatism in it, and when he leaned on his crutch, the crutch suddenly slipped, and down he went kerflummox kerflummox all in a heap. Well, here's a pretty kettle of fish, he cried. I ought never to have tried to kick that green football. I should have waited until it was ripe. So he sat down on top of the hill and looked at the ocean tumbling and foaming on the beach below him, and he waited for the green football to get ripe. And every once in a while he would poke it with his crutch to see if it was getting soft, but it wasn't. And once, right after he did this, the old gentleman rabbit heard someone cry out, My goodness, Uncle Wiggily, what are you doing? Waiting for this green football to get ripe so that I can kick it, was the rabbit's reply. Oh, hello, ha, laughed the grasshopper, for it was that leaping insect who had spoken. That is not a football. It is a watermelon, 
and inside it is all red and sweet and juicy. Come, if you can, cut it open. We will have a fine feast. I haven't had any watermelon in some time. Can you cut it? Oh, I can cut it fast enough, declared the rabbit. Here goes, and I hope it is better looking on the inside than it is on the outside. So the rabbit took out his knife, with which he usually spread his bread and butter, and he cut a hole in the watermelon. Then Uncle Wiggily and the grasshopper scooped out all the nice red juicy part and ate it. And would you ever believe it? Something happened right after that. They had no sooner wiped the red watermelon juice off their faces than there was a terrible roaring sound in the bushes, and out jumped a big black bear. Oh, he was going on something frightful. Yes, really he was. But don't be frightened, for I won't let him hurt anybody. I'll let him chew on my typewriter first, and that will dull his teeth. On the bear came, straight for the watermelon. Oh, what can I do? cried Uncle Wiggily. That bear will get me, but he won't hurt you, Mr. Grasshopper, as you are so small. Don't worry, said the hopper grass kindly. I'll find a way to save you. Quick, before the bear sees you, hop inside the watermelon. For you see, they had eaten up all the inside and left the melon rind hollow just like a yellow pumpkin jack-o'-lantern at Halloween. Uncle Wiggily saw that this was the best thing to do, so inside the melon he hopped, and then the grasshopper put back in place the piece they had cut out, and you would never have known but that the melon was a whole new one, never having been cut and the inside eaten out. On came the bear, sniffing with his black nose. Then he saw the grasshopper and asked, suspicious-like, is there a rabbit around here? I don't see any, spoke the grasshopper, and he really couldn't see anyone but the bear because Uncle Wiggily was inside the melon, you know. Well, if there is no rabbit, I'll have to eat this watermelon then, said the bear, for I am very hungry. Now the grasshopper knew that if the bear once bit into the melon and opened it, he'd see the rabbit hiding inside. So what did the hopper grass do? but give the melon a shove with his strong hind legs. And down the hill the melon rolled with a rabbit in it, just as Buddy Pig, the guinea pig boy, once rolled down hill inside a cabbage. Faster and faster down the hill rolled the melon, with Uncle Wiggily in it. And then the bear saw one of the rabbit's paws sticking out of a crack. Oh ho! You have fooled me! cried the bear to the grasshopper. Now I'll chase after that melon and get the rabbit, too! So the bear started down the hill after the melon, but his foot slipped and he slid down, oh, so fast, that he got to the bottom of the hill first. There he stood waiting for Uncle Wiggily, but a queer thing happened. The melon hit a stone, burst open, and out flew the rabbit on a pile of soft sand. But the pieces of the melon hit the bear on his soft and tender nose, and he thought he was surely killed and off he ran to the woods howling and growling. So that's how Uncle Wiggily escaped from the bear, for the old gentleman rabbit wasn't hurt a bit for all his tumble. Then he washed the pieces of melon off his clothes and traveled on again with the grasshopper to seek his fortune. And he had another advantage soon. I'll tell you about it very shortly, when in case the ice man doesn't go skating and forget to leave us a loaf of bread, the next bedtime story will be about Uncle Wiggily and the Katy did. End of Uncle Wiggily and the Watermelon. Story 15 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit librivox.org. Recording by Kathy Reynolds, Albany, New York. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris. Story 15, Uncle Wiggily and Kate Did. Well, what are we going to do today? Asked the grasshopper of Uncle Wiggily as they sat down to breakfast one sunny morning after a rain the night before. Oh, I suppose I must keep on searching for some gold or diamonds for my fortune, answered the old gentleman rabbit but I am getting quite tired of going around so much and finding nothing. I'll keep it up a week or so longer, and then, if I don't find any money, I'm going back home anyhow. 
I am quite lonesome for Sammy and Susie Littletail and all of my friends. When you go home, I hope that I can go with you, said the grasshopper, sort of sad-like. I'll be sorry when you leave me. Of course you can come along, answered Uncle Wiggily kindly, as he flopped his long ears back and forth. Then he and the grasshopper finished their breakfast, washed the acorn cups and saucers, and shook the crumbs off the green leaf which they had used for a tablecloth. And pretty soon, a whole lot of little black ants crawled along and ate up all the crumbs so that nothing was wasted. "'Well, here we go!' cried the old gentleman rabbit cheerfully as he picked up his barber pole crutch and slung his valise over his shoulder. Then he hopped off, and so did the grasshopper, singing a funny little song on the way and also playing the fiddle with his left hind leg. The song went something like this. Here we go, fast and slow, hopping on our way. In heat and cold we look for gold, which we may find some day. Sing a song not too long, cheerful, gay, and bright. When wide awake we eat sweet cake, and then we sleep all night. Hipping, hopping, without stopping, we sing and do not cry. Skip and jump around the pump. Now we'll say goodbye. Why, what in the world did you say that for? asked Uncle Wiggily of the grasshopper as the insect finished his song. There is no one here to whom we can say goodbye and not a sign of a pump. I know it, but you see, I'm just making believe, replied the cheerful little fellow, turning one somersault and part of another one. Oh, then that's different, agreed the old gentleman rabbit, as he stooped over to take a stone out of his shoe. And just as he did so, there came bouncing down out of a tall tree a big green hickory nut, and it almost hit Uncle Wiggily on the end of his twinkling nose. Hmm, exclaimed the grasshopper as he crawled under a big leaf in order to be out of danger. Someone is throwing things at us. I wonder who it can be. I don't know, answered the rabbit and then he and the grasshopper looked up in a tree, but they could see no one. So they went on a little farther, and pretty soon Uncle Wiggily got another stone in his shoe. He stooped over to take it out when slam bang! Down came a green butternut this time, and it struck him on the end of his left ear. This must stop, cried the old gentleman rabbit. If it doesn't, the first thing we know there will be coconuts falling down on us, and then we will be hurt. Oh, I think there are no monkeys around here to throw coconuts at us, said the grasshopper, but this is certainly very strange. Perhaps it is the alligator or the fuzzy fox up in a tree trying to hurt us by throwing the little nuts. Perhaps, agreed Uncle Wiggily, well, we will hurry on and get out of these woods. So they hurried all they could, but as it happened, the grasshopper got a big wooden splinter in his left front leg and it took him and Uncle Wiggily quite a while to get it out, and when at last they did so, it was almost night. They were hopping along, looking for a place to sleep in the woods, when all of a sudden down came a big black walnut, and it hit Uncle Wiggily's crutch, bouncing off with a bang. "'Who did that?' cried the rabbit, looking up as well as he could in the darkness. "'Who threw that nut?' "'Katie did!' cried a shrill voice up in a tree. "'Katie did!' Oh, she did, eh? exclaimed the old gentleman rabbit. Well, I always thought Katie was a nice little girl. I can't believe she'd throw anything at me. It's not possible. Katie did, she did, cried the voice in the tree again. Oh, would you ever think such a thing of her? asked the grasshopper, who was quite excited. No, I wouldn't, declared Uncle Wiggily sad-like. Where does Katie live? he went on. Perhaps if I speak to her and tell her how unpleasant it is to have nuts thrown at one, she won't do it again. Where does she live? Katie did, Katie did, Katie did, was all the voice said. Of course, I know that by this time, said Uncle Wiggily, but where does she live? Whereabouts in these woods? Katie did, Katie did, cried the voice again. Ah, I see, exclaimed the grasshopper. That means she once did live here, but that she has moved away. That must be it. Then I'm glad of it, spoke the rabbit. I hope she doesn't come back to throw any more things at us. Do you think she will? And he looked up in the tree to see who had been talking so about Katie. Katie did, Katie did, was all the answer there was. But all of a sudden, there was a rustling in the bushes, and out into the moonlight, which was then shining in the forest, there came a little white pussycat with four legs and a long tail. 
Oh, dear, she cried. I'm Katie, and I heard what you all said about me, but I didn't do it at all. I didn't throw a thing at you, Uncle Wiggily, or at the grasshopper, either. I wouldn't do such a thing. Oh, how can you believe it? I didn't do it at all. Katie did, Katie did, cried the shrill voice up in the treetop. Katie did, she did. Ha hum, cried the old gentleman rabbit. This must be looked into. If Katie didn't do it, we mustn't have her talked about that way. Come, Mr. Grasshopper, we'll see who's calling out about Katie so much. But just as the rabbit was helping the grasshopper to climb up the tree to see who it was that had been calling, all of a sudden out from behind a stump there sprang a savage fox who wanted to eat up Uncle Wiggily and the pussy and the grasshopper also. But the rabbit happened to see a hole in the ground. Quick! "'Jump down here, all of you!' he cried, and he helped the pussy and the grasshopper to get into the hole where they would be safe from the fox. And as they disappeared underground, the voice up in the treetop cried once more, "'Katie did! Katie did!' "'Oh, ho! I'll put a stop to that tomorrow,' declared Uncle Wiggily. "'Don't cry, Katie, dear. I'll see that whoever is bothering you will stop.' Then the little white pussy dried her tears, and the three friends slept safely in the hole all night and the fox did not bother them a bit and the next day uncle wiggily found out who was calling to katie and who threw the nuts at him and i'll tell you about it on the next page when the story will be about uncle wiggily and katie didn't that is if the trolley car doesn't run up on the front stoop and break the rocking chair's arms so i can't sing the rag doll to sleep end of uncle wiggily and kate did Story 16 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris. Story 16 Uncle Wiggily and Katie Didn't. Katie the nice little white pussy was the first one to awaken the next morning in the hole where she and uncle wiggily and the grasshopper had crawled to get away from the bad fox katie arose washed her face and her paws with her red tongue and then she softly tickled the grasshopper on his nose with the end of her fuzzy wuzzy tail ha oh, ho what's the matter cried the grasshopper as he hopped out of the bed made of dried leaves. "'Is the house on fire?' "'No, we're not in a house, but in a hole underground, so I don't very well see how it could catch on fire,' spoke Katie. "'I wanted you to get up and help me with the breakfast. I thought we would let Uncle Wiggily sleep late this morning, as he is tired.' "'That's a good idea,' declared the little jumping chap. I'll just take a hop outside and see what I can find to eat. Well, the grasshopper started to go out of the hole, leaving Uncle Wiggily fast asleep. But all of a sudden, the tiny jumping fellow came back, and instead of being green as he usually was, he had turned quite pale. What's the matter? asked Katie. The hole is stopped up, cried the grasshopper. "'Someone has filled up the front door with dirt, and we can't get out.' "'Oh, that's too bad,' said the pussy. And she and the grasshopper looked at the lightning bug, who was shining brightly like a Christmas tree candle down in the dark hole so they could see. He had shone all night for them. "'How will we ever get out?' went on the pussy. "'It is terrible to be shut up here.' "'What's that? Is there more trouble?' suddenly asked Uncle Wiggily, as he got out of bed feet first. "'Yes,' said the grasshopper. "'The front door of the hole is stopped up, and we can't get out. "'I think the bad fox did it.' "'Very likely,' agreed Uncle Wiggily. "'But don't worry, for I can easily dig out the dirt, and then we can go up and find out who it was that said Katie threw nuts at us when she didn't.' So Uncle Wiggily went to the front door of the whole house and began to dig with his strong feet. 
and then he happened to think of something if i dig a new front door near the place where the fox stopped up the old one said the old gentleman rabbit thoughtful like that bad creature may be there waiting to grab us when we go out so i'll play a trick on him i'll dig a new door for his whole house and we'll go out that way i'll dig it at the back so uncle wiggily did this and soon there was a nice opening from the hole underground and it was some distance away from the one by which the three friends had gone in and surely enough they looked through the trees when they went out and there was that bad fox near the stopped-up hole waiting for them to come out so that he might grab them i guess he'll wait there a long while for us said uncle wiggily blinking his nose and laughing come on now very quietly and we'll go off in the woods where he can't find us so away through the forest they went and the fox never saw them he stayed by the hole which he had stopped up with dirt and stones and he was there a week waiting for the rabbit and his friends to come up and the fox got so thin from having nothing to eat in all that time that when he finally did go away his tail nearly dropped off and blew away but uncle wiggily and the grasshopper and the pussy whose name was katie traveled on and on over the hills they went and through the fields but they couldn't find out who it was that had said katie had thrown the nuts when she didn't do it at all at last they came to another forest and just as night was coming on and uncle wiggily was passing under a tree slam bang down came another butternut and nearly hit him on the eye there you see i didn't throw that cried katie who was walking beside uncle wiggily yes it couldn't have been you agreed the old gentleman rabbit i wonder who did it katie did katie did suddenly cried a voice no she didn't said uncle wiggily firmly who are you to say such things here he is i see him exclaimed the grasshopper it isn't any one at all it's a little green bug with wings and he is something like me he's been saying that katie did when she didn't do it at all and sure enough there on a tree was a little light green bug and as uncle wiggily watched he heard this insect call out as bold as bold could be katie did katie did now look here said the old gentleman rabbit as he pointed his long ears and his crutch at the green bug why do you say such things when you know they aren't so katie never threw any nuts at me they just dropped down off the tree themselves i'm sure of it katie never did it and she feels badly to have you say so katie did katie did cried the insect again as if he hadn't heard the rabbit speak i have to say it you know he went on as he scraped his two long hind legs together i have to call out that katie did uncle wiggily you do even when she didn't do it asked the rabbit surprised like yes said the insect katie did katie did i have to call katie did oh i think it's just too horrid for anything said poor katie almost ready to cry i wish you wouldn't say such things about a nice pussy spoke the grasshopper for katie didn't do it i know she didn't and just then off in another tree there came a second voice calling katie didn't katie didn't there i knew someone would be kind to me exclaimed the pussy someone knows i didn't do it i didn't throw the nuts katie did katie did cried the first green insect katie didn't katie didn't answered the second little green chap she did went the first one she didn't katie didn't answered his brother positive like katie did katie didn't oh my this dispute is very unpleasant said uncle wiggily please stop it but the green insects wouldn't stop and they kept on calling first one would say that katie did do it and then the other would say she didn't and so they went on katie did katie didn't 
Well, said Uncle Wiggily at last, when he had tried to make them stop disputing, but couldn't do it. At any rate, Katie, you have some friends who will stand up for you, and who will always say you didn't do it, and I know you didn't, no matter if the others say you did. Now, let's find a place to sleep, and tomorrow I will once more look for my fortune. So they found a nice hollow stump in which to go to sleep, and nothing happened to them all night, except that a big-eyed, feathery owl tried to bite the grasshopper. But Uncle Wiggily tickled the bad bird with his crutch and made him fly away, and then they all slept in peace and quietness until morning. The next day the old gentleman rabbit had quite an adventure. I'll tell you what it was in the following bedtime story, which will be about Uncle Wiggily and Peetie Bow Wow, that is, if my piece of huckleberry pie doesn't fall into the milk pitcher and turn it sky-blue pink like the elephant's lemonade at the circus. End of Story 16Story 17 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris. Story 17 Uncle Wiggily and Peetie. Katie. The little white pussy felt quite happy the next day after she and Uncle Wiggily and the grasshopper had slept in the hollow stump, as I told you last. No matter if some of the green insects do say I did throw those nuts, others of them will say I didn't do it, so it will be all right. And from then on, even up to the present time, you can hear the did and the didn't insects calling to each other in the cool night. Katie did. Katie didn't. That's how they dispute, and they never seem to settle it. Where are you going? asked the old gentleman rabbit as he saw the pussy starting off by herself in the woods when breakfast was over. Oh, I'm going back home, she said. I have been away too long already, and my mamma will be worried about me. But I'm very glad to have met you and the grasshopper, and I hope you will soon find your fortune, Uncle Wiggily. I hope so, too, spoke the rabbit, and then he and the grasshopper started off together through the woods, looking on all sides for any signs of gold or diamonds. They travelled on for many miles, but I'm sorry to say they didn't find any fortune at all not even so much as a five-cent piece with a hole in it. When noon came, they sat down by a little spring of water and built a fire. Then the rabbit roasted some carrots, and the grasshopper ate a small piece of cherry pie, with some bread and jam, for he was very fond of sweet things. "'Well, we'll travel on again,' said the rabbit, as he scattered the crumbs for the ants to eat. "'Why don't you stay here and look for your fortune?' asked the grasshopper, wiggling his ears. "'Oh, it would be of no use,' said Uncle Wiggily. "'Haven't we looked all over in these woods, and we didn't even find a diamond ring? No, we must travel on.' "'Why don't you dig a hole here, by this old stump?' asked the grasshopper. "'Perhaps there is a gold mine here. It is nice and shady, and you can dig deep and keep cool.' I will sit on the stump and watch you, and also sing a song now and then. Perhaps that will be a good plan, agreed Uncle Wiggily after thinking it over. I believe I will dig here. It can do no harm, and it may be of some use. So, laying aside his crutch and his valise, he began to dig in the earth with his sharp feet. My, I'm making a regular mine, thought Uncle Wiggily after a while. But there doesn't seem to be any gold here. However, I'll go down a little deeper. And then, all of a sudden, he heard the grasshopper cry, Look out, Uncle Wiggily! Look out! The alligator is coming! Oh, me! Oh, my! shouted the rabbit as he tried to jump up out of the hole he had dug. But it was too deep, and he only fell back to the bottom. 
he heard the whirr of the grasshopper's wing as that hopping chap flew away and as the grasshopper skipped over the daisies he cried out i'll go get help uncle wiggily for he knew he couldn't fight the alligator all alone oh whatever shall i do thought the rabbit i must get out so he gave another jump but it was of no use and then before uncle wiggily could twinkle his nose twice over the edge of the hole leaned the skillery scalery alligator ah ho so there you are cried the scaly creature smiling such a big smile that it is a wonder the top of his head didn't fly off so you are in a hole well that suits me for you can't get away and i can take you whenever i please i guess i'll wait until i'm a little more hungry meanwhile i'll sit here and look at you and the alligator did this perched on the edge of the hole with his mouth grinning from ear to ear and his tail slowly switching to and fro to keep off the flies from his scaly hide are you really going to bite me asked the rabbit sad like i am replied the alligator in a nutmeg greater voice would you let me go if i gave you my barber pole crutch and my valise filled with cherry pie asked uncle wiggily sorrowful like not for worlds cried the alligator smacking his jaws i'm going to bite you now and with that he started to crawl down into the hole to get the rabbit but don't worry someone is on the way to save uncle wiggily all of a sudden just as the alligator was almost down to uncle wiggily and only the tip of his tail was sticking out over the edge there was a movement on the other side of the hole and looking up the rabbit saw a curious sight there was some sort of an animal peering down at him but such an animal his tail was all stuck up with stickery burrs and it had a lump of mud on the end on one ear was stuck a big green leaf and on the other ear was a piece of red paper from a chinese lantern and on his back were chestnut burrs and bits of briar bushes and this animal grinned and showed his teeth and shook himself so that the mud was scattered all over then this animal cried here you bad alligator get away and let that rabbit alone what for do you want to bite him yourself asked the skillery scalery alligator creature grinning from ear to ear no i don't answered the dreadful looking animal but you get away from here or i'll eat you and my you should have heard that muddy creature growl no perhaps it's just as well you didn't hear him or you might have bad dreams anyhow that new queer animal growled so that even the alligator was frightened and uncle wiggily said to himself oh worse and worse if the alligator doesn't get me this terrible creature will then the terrible creature growled some more and showed his teeth and the alligator crawled out of the hole and scurried away taking his scaly tail with him ha ha that's the time i fooled you cried the terrible looking animal and then he burst out laughing and took the paper and leaf from his ears shook out the burrs from his tail and whom do you suppose it was why none other than peetie bow wow the nice puppy dog oh you saved my life cried uncle wiggily thankfully yes he certainly did said the grasshopper perching himself on the edge of the hole i met peetie in the woods and told him about you and he rolled in the mud and water and stuck himself all up with burrs so as to make himself look as terrible as possible and scare the alligator it was a good trick wasn't it it was indeed cried the rabbit as the grasshopper and the puppy dog helped him out of the hole even if i didn't find my fortune so the alligator didn't get the rabbit and uncle wiggily had another adventure next day i'll tell you what it was very soon for the following story will be about uncle wiggily and jackie bow wow 
that is if the picture on the wall doesn't turn upside down and scare the parlour lamp so that it goes out on the porch to sit on the doormat end of story seventeen story eighteen of uncle wiggily's fortune this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org uncle wiggily's fortune by howard r garris story eighteen uncle wiggily and jackie uncle wiggily with the grasshopper and peety bow wow the little puppy dog were travelling along the road together and the old gentleman rabbit was looking on both sides for his fortune it was the day after peetie had saved uncle wiggily from the bad alligator and the three friends had spent the night in a hollow stump in the woods then they had breakfast eating some cherry pie that the rabbit had left in his valise tell me peetie said uncle wiggily as they tramped along how does it happen that you are so far from home and what were you doing in the woods just before you scared the alligator away oh my brother jackie and i came to visit our grandpa who lives somewhere around here said the puppy dog yesterday jackie and i went for a walk in the woods and i got lost it was then that the grasshopper found me and asked me to come and help you which you kindly did said the old gentleman rabbit as he brushed a mosquito off his twinkling nose but i didn't know you were lost peetie why didn't you say something about it and here you've been away from your grandpa's house all night and he and your brother jackie may be very much worried why didn't you tell me about this yesterday well i thought you had troubles enough of your own said peetie politely as he looked down in a puddle of water to see if his tail was fastened on straight but i would like very much uncle wiggily to find my way back to grandpa's house and see jackie he went on and i know he'll be glad to see you then we must start off at once and look for your grandpa's house decided the old gentleman rabbit i will let my fortune go for to-day and we will take care of you so off they started looking for the house of peetie's grandpa the puppy dog helped them look of course but he was too small to be of much use every once in a while he would find a nice juicy bone and he would stop to gnaw that instead of looking for the path back home oh you mustn't do that said uncle wiggily as he leaned on his crutch to rest himself there will be time enough to eat bones after you are home trot along now peetie well i'll just bury this bone here where jackie and i can get it later said peetie so he dug a hole for the bone and carefully covered it with earth where it would keep just as good as if it was in a refrigerator or an ice box well the rabbit and the grasshopper and the puppy dog looked in all the places they could think of and around corners and up and down the middle and on both sides for a sight of the house of peetie's grandpa but they couldn't seem to find it and then all of a sudden and so quickly that it happened before you could roll a popcorn ball on top of the piano there was a growling in the bushes and a shaking of the leaves and out popped a big black bear my oh my but he was a big savage bear and as soon as he saw uncle wiggily he cried out now i have you my fine rabbit friend and a puppy dog also to say nothing of a grasshopper with which to finish off oh this is a lucky day for me you you don't mean to say that you are going to eat us do you asked uncle wiggily turning pale around the ears that's exactly what i do mean said the bear in a grillery growlery voice and how very lucky it's just my dinner time and he looked at his watch to make sure and then shut the cover with a bang well you can't eat me said the grasshopper and with that he gave a spring and landed inside of a jack-in-the-pulpit growing on top of a high rock and he pulled the cover of the plant over him so the bear couldn't see him 
well the grasshopper got away said the bear in a disappointed voice but i have you two yet anyhow and with that he made a jump and grabbed uncle wiggily in one paw and peetie bow wow in the other paw then he hugged them tight just like a little girl hugs her two dollies and the bear looked down at them first at uncle wiggily and then at peetie and that bear showed his ugly teeth and said in his grillery growlery voice let me see which one of you shall i eat first well you can imagine how frightened uncle wiggily and the puppy dog were they didn't know what to do i think i'll eat you first mr rabbit said the bear at length and he was just getting ready to eat uncle wiggily as you would eat a strawberry when there was a rushing sound in the bushes back of that bear and a brave voice called out no mr bear you're not going to eat either one of them put uncle wiggily down at once and let go of peetie bow wow at once i say ha huh, who are you cried the bear turning around quickly in order to see better who are you if i may ask i'm jackie bow wow was the answer and if you don't at once do as i say i'll shoot you with my gun well you can just imagine how surprised uncle wiggily and peetie were to see jackie standing there as brave as a lion pointing a black gun at the black bear i'm not going to let them go cried the bear savagely and he hugged the rabbit and the puppy dog tighter than ever then i'm going to shoot cried jackie one two three he counted here i go bang oh don't shoot don't shoot begged the bear and he quickly dropped the rabbit and the doggy and then he ran away through the bushes taking his little stubby tail with him then jackie burst out laughing as hard as he could what's the matter asked uncle wiggily in surprise <laughs> laughed jackie what a joke on that bear i didn't have a real gun at all it's only a wooden one with which i was playing hunt indians but he thought it was a real one and he was so scared that he let you go <laughs> ho, ho. it's a good thing you came along when you did said his brother peetie we were just looking for grandpa's house i was lost you know and couldn't find my way back i know you were and i was looking for you spoke jackie then Peetie told him about the alligator and where he had been with Uncle Wiggily, and Jackie was very glad to see his brother and the old gentleman rabbit again, and he was soon ready to show them the way to his grandpa's house. But they had forgotten about the grasshopper in the Jack in the Pulpit, and a very curious thing happened to that poor insect. I'll tell you about it on the next page, when the bedtime story will be named Uncle Wiggily and the Red Monkey. That is, if the rubber ball doesn't bounce into the rice pudding and scatter it all over the clean tablecloth. End of story 18please visit LibriVox.org. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris Story 19 Uncle Wiggily and the Monkey Uncle Wiggily, with Peetie and Jackie Bow Wow, was walking along the road toward the puppy dog's grandpa's house, and they were talking how Jackie had made the black bear run away by pointing a make-believe wooden gun at the savage creature all at once the old gentleman rabbit exclaimed that grasshopper what about the grasshopper asked jackie did one bite you uncle wiggily no but my friend the green grasshopper jumped into a jack in the pulpit when the bear came and here we have come away and forgotten all about him we must go right back so back they started and on the way the rabbit told what a kind friend the grasshopper had been to him on his travels well, they got to the place where the bear had scared them, and when they looked up on the rock, no Jack in the pulpit was to be seen, and there was no sign of the grasshopper. I'm sure it was here that the grasshopper made his jump, said Uncle Wiggily, looking carefully about. 
Yes, said Jackie, but there is no Jack in the pulpit on this rock at all. Here is a pile of dirt, though, spoke Peetie. Perhaps there is a bone under it. Let's dig, Jackie. So those two puppy dogs dug in the earth, while Uncle Wiggily looked all around for the grasshopper. Then, all of a sudden, Peetie cried out, Oh, look here! The Jack in the pulpit is under this pile of earth. The top is just sticking out. Now we'll find the hopper grass. I see how it is, said the rabbit. When the bear ran away so fast from Jackie's wooden gun, the toenail of the savage creature scattered up the earth, and it went in a shower all over the Jack, where the grasshopper was hidden. No wonder we couldn't find him, for he was buried. Now please dig very carefully, Peetie and Jackie, or you might scratch him with your paws. We will be careful, said Jackie. So he and his brother dug and dug, until the Jack in the pulpit was almost uncovered. Then they didn't dig any more, but with their tails, which were like dusting brushes, they dashed off the earth very gently, until the plant was all clear, and out popped the grasshopper, not a bit harmed, though he was somewhat frightened. "'My, I thought I'd never get out!' exclaimed the jumping chap, taking a long breath and blowing the dust off his legs. Then he was introduced to Jackie Bow Wow, whom he had not met before and the four friends trudged along the road together. Pretty soon they came to the house of Grandpa Bark, and the old gentleman dog was very glad to see Peetie, who had been lost, and had stayed away all night. "'And I am very glad to see you also, Uncle Wiggily,' said Grandpa Bark, "'and likewise the grasshopper. Come in and have something to eat, and stay a while to rest yourself.' So Uncle Wiggily did this, and after a bit he said, "'Well, now, I must be off once more to seek my fortune. "'When I find it, I am going back home, "'and I hope that soon comes to pass, "'for I am tired of travelling about.' "'So he said good-bye to Peetie and Jackie Bow Wow, "'and he and the grasshopper hopped off together. "'On and on they went, over the hills and dales, "'through the woods and fields, "'and pretty soon they came to a place in the woods where there was a big box. It was almost as large as a small house, and it had a front door to it, but no windows. The front door was open, and over it was a card reading, Come in if you want to. Ahem, I wonder if that means me, said Uncle Wiggily. Perhaps I may find my fortune in there. I'm going inside. I wouldn't if I were you, spoke the grasshopper. It may be a trap. Nonsensicalness! exclaimed the old gentleman rabbit, quick like. Come along, we'll go in. So he and the grasshopper went inside, and no sooner had they entered than slam bang down came the sliding door with a crash, catching them fast there just like mice in a trap. Oh, what did I tell you? cried the grasshopper sadly. This is a trap. We're in it. "'Yes, I see we are,' spoke Uncle Wiggily, much puzzled. "'It was all my fault. I should have been more careful.' "'Never mind,' said the grasshopper kindly, as he wiped away his tears on a piece of green leaf. "'I see a crack between the boards that I can crawl through. It is too small for you, but I can get out, and I'll go for help.' So out he crawled, leaving Uncle Wiggily there. The old gentleman rabbit was thinking of the dreadful things that might happen to him, when all of a sudden he heard someone unlocking the front door that had fallen shut. "'I must see who that is,' whispered the rabbit to himself. So he peered out of a crack, and he saw something red and fuzzy-like at the door. "'Oh, it's a red bear,' thought the rabbit, and he was looking for a place to hide, when all at once the door opened and there stood a nice, kind, red monkey— with a red cap on. "'Oh, I've got company, I see,' cried the red monkey in delight. "'I'm glad of that, Uncle Wiggily. I've been waiting some time to see you. How did you get here?' "'Isn't, isn't this a trap?' asked the rabbit. "'Not a bit of it,' cried the red monkey with a jolly laugh. "'This is my house. I went out this morning and left the door open. It must have blown shut by mistake. I'm sorry you were frightened.' Wait, I'll do some tricks to make you laugh. So the red monkey stood on his nose, 
and then on one ear and then he made all the letters of the alphabet on his tail all except the letter x which is very hard for a monkey to make then the monkey took two apple pies and made them into one and he and uncle wiggily ate it and my how good it was by this time the rabbit wasn't frightened any more and he told the red monkey all about his travels to find a fortune and then the grasshopper came hopping back with old dog percival to help uncle wiggily get out of the trap but there wasn't any need for it was no trap at all you see so the red monkey and the dog and the grasshopper and the old gentleman rabbit had a nice time at the house of the red monkey who told them many stories and one was how he came to be colored red i'll tell you about that as soon as i can when in case the fish pole doesn't go out in the rain and catch cold the bedtime story will be about uncle wiggily and the butterfly end a story 19story 20 of uncle wiggily's fortune this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by kathy reynolds albany new york uncle wiggily's fortune by howard r garris story 20 uncle wiggily and the butterfly you have a very nice house here said uncle wiggily to the red monkey after they had all sat down and old dog percival had been told that there was no need to rescue his rabbit friend from a trap yes it is a fine little house said the red monkey i built it away off in the woods so as to be nice and quiet you see i used to live with a monkey who plays five-hand organs at once but finally it got so that i couldn't stand the music any longer so i went off by myself and made this little house but how did you happen to get splashed with that lovely red color asked the grasshopper that is if you will excuse me asking you such a personal question pray do not mention it i beg of you said the red monkey as he tossed up a lump of coal and caught it on his nose i will gladly tell you how i became colored red it was this way i was writing a letter to a friend of mine and i had no more black ink left i didn't know what to do until i happened to think that out in the yard back of my house on a bush were some red raspberries i gathered some of them and put them in a teacup then with a potato masher i crushed them all up until the red juice ran out then i had the loveliest red ink you ever saw but just then a fly lit on the end of my nose i went to brush him off with the potato masher when i happened to hit the cup full of red juice by mistake well you can imagine what happened the raspberry juice splashed all over me until i looked like a strawberry ice cream cone and i've been red ever since it's a very fine color said uncle wiggily yes agreed the monkey with a sigh but sometimes it's quite a trouble all the turkey gobblers and the bulls in the fields chase me whenever they see me for they don't like red i'm thinking of taking some dandelions and coloring myself yellow next year but now tell me of your travels uncle wiggily so the old gentleman rabbit did so mentioning how he was searching for his fortune but couldn't find it then percival told about when he used to be in a circus and do tricks and the grasshopper told how he made his music by playing the fiddle with his left hind leg and then the red monkey gave them all some chocolate coconut pudding and it was time to go to bed now i have something sad to tell you but please don't get alarmed for i'll make it come out right at the end in the middle of the night poor uncle wiggily was taken ill he had a dreadful pain and he was as hot with a fever as a stove with a fire in it i am afraid you have been traveling about too much said the red monkey as he lighted a lamp and gave the rabbit a drink of cool water we must have dr possum see you in the morning perhaps i ate too much chocolate coconut pudding said uncle wiggily oh how i suffer and how hot i am well they did all they could for him by putting his paws in mustard water and giving him sweet spirits of nitre but it didn't seem to do any good yes he is a very sick rabbit said dr possum who came in the morning he ought to be home in bed but we can't move him now he'll have to stay here oh the grasshopper and old dog percival and i will take good care of him 
said the red monkey kindly. Yes, I guess you will, agreed Dr. Possum. So he left some bitter medicine for Uncle Wiggily, and the old gentleman rabbit took it without even wrinkling up his nose. And it was very, very bitter. The medicine, I mean, and not his nose. Oh, how hot I am, cried Uncle Wiggily, as the sun got higher and higher in the sky and beat down on the house where the red monkey lived. I wish I had some ice. Then he fell asleep. We will see if we can't find some said the grasshopper, so he and the monkey and old dog Percival started off to look for an ice house, leaving Uncle Wiggily asleep. Pretty soon he awakened. Oh, I wish I had an electric fan to cool me, cried the poor sick old gentleman rabbit. Oh, how hot I am! Oh, dear! Well, he kept getting hotter and hotter and tossed to and fro on the bed, and he wished for ice and ice cream cones and all such cool things as those. Then all of a sudden, when he was so warm he couldn't seem to stand it any longer, he heard a little voice singing this song. Away up north in the ice and snow, that's the place for you to go, where wintry winds do always blow, and the polar bears on a big ice flow where seals dive down in the icy sea where it's far too cold for a bug like me where snowflakes fall so you cannot see that is the place for you to be oh i'm sure it is cried poor uncle wiggily i wish i was up there in the arctic regions but I can't go. Oh, if I only had an electric fan to cool me off. I'll be an electric fan for you, said the voice. And turning his head, Uncle Wiggily saw, perched on the window sill, a beautiful big butterfly with red and yellow wings. Then the splendid creature flew right up on the rabbit's pillow and began to wave his wings. Faster and faster the butterfly's wings went until you couldn't see them move just like an electric fan. And a cool breeze swept over poor hot Uncle Wiggily and made him feel much better. Then the butterfly fluttered harder than ever, and he sang another song about ice cream freezers and blizzards and snow and hail and icebergs and polar bears and all cool things like that, and he kept on fanning the rabbit with his wings. And before he knew it, Uncle Wiggily went fast asleep again. Then in a little while the grasshopper and the red monkey and old dog Percival came back with some ice and they gave the rabbit a cool drink and the butterfly kept on fanning him and soon Dr. Possum came in and he said, Well, I do declare, Uncle Wiggily is all well again. The butterfly with his cool wings and cold songs has cured him. Then the rabbit thanked the beautiful winged creature very kindly and got ready to go on seeking his fortune again next day. He had quite an adventure, too, and I'll tell it to you on the next page, when in case the little boy across the street doesn't lose his mittens inside a watermelon and freeze his rubber boots, the story will be about Uncle Wiggily and roast potatoes. End of Uncle Wiggily and the Butterfly Story 21 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kathy Reynolds, Albany, New York. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris. Story 21, Uncle Wiggily and the Potatoes. Well, how are you feeling this beautiful morning, Uncle Wiggily? asked the red monkey, as he knocked on the door of a hollow stump where the rabbit had spent the night. Are you all better? The red monkey went on as he took a coconut out of his pocket and looked inside the shell to see what time it was. Oh, yes, I am much better. Thank you kindly for asking, said the rabbit. But how comes it that you are here? I thought you were off in the woods. So I was, answered the monkey as he nibbled a little bit of the coconut. But I came here to keep you company and help you look for your fortune. Ha! But where is my friend the grasshopper? asked Uncle Wiggily, sort of anxious-like. Oh, he had to hop away in the night to see a sick cousin of his, spoke the red monkey. 
and on his way he jumped past my house and asked me if i wouldn't come and stay with you while he was gone he said you might be lonesome so i came it is very kind of you i'm sure said the rabbit i like company i think i am all well and strong again for the butterfly who pretended he was an electric fan made me nice and cool and i am much better i am ready to start off now and look once more for my fortune are you coming i am said the red monkey looking at his tail to see if a pink cow had stepped on it but no pink cow was there so after uncle wiggily had put some cherry pie in his valise he and the monkey started off together and on the way the red monkey who was red you know because some red ink which he made from raspberry juice splashed on him this red monkey as he and uncle wiggily walked along tossed the coconut up in the air and caught it as it came down sometimes the monkey would catch the coconut in his left paw and sometimes in his right and again in his left foot and still again in his right foot so altogether he had quite an exciting time you see well uncle wiggily looked on all sides for his fortune but he couldn't seem to find it the red monkey helped him too but it was of no use on and on they went over the hills and through the woods and across the fields until finally they came to a place where there were a whole lot of stones made into a sort of a fireplace as if some boys had built it to play camp and hunt the indians only of course you know there aren't really any indians to hunt any more hum says dud exclaimed uncle wiggily as he sat down on a log and looked at the stone fireplace i wonder what this is for i don't know said the monkey as he made the coconut whiz about like a merry-go-round i don't know what it is for but i should say it was very lucky for us why so asked uncle wiggily and he wiped the dust off his red white and blue barber pole crutch on his fuzzy ears why is this lucky for us because answered the monkey here are some potatoes growing in this field next door and here is a place to make a fire it is nearly dinner time so there is nothing to stop us from having some roast potatoes for our lunch fine cried uncle wiggily i don't believe the man who owns the potatoes will mind if we take a few i'll dig them with my paws and we'll cook some and i'll make the fire said the red monkey as he looked about for a puddle of water you know he wanted the water puddle to use as a looking-glass in order to see if any of the red had come off him yet but there was no water so he didn't bother but instead he gathered the wood and soon he had made a fine fire in the stone fireplace then along came uncle wiggily with some potatoes which he had dug and they were put in to roast my how the fire did blaze when the monkey kept putting sticks of wood on it and how the potatoes roasted and crackled there in the heat oh how nice they smelled too it makes me hungry for some and as soon as i finish this story i'm going out and roast some just as uncle wiggily did but you children mustn't do it unless your papa or mamma or big brother or sister is near in case any sparks got on you and burned you but the red monkey and uncle wiggily were very careful to be sure some smoke got in the monkey's eyes and he looked as if he were crying and some smoke got up uncle wiggily's twinkling nose and made him sneeze but they didn't mind that i guess the potatoes are cooked now said the monkey after a while and he took out on a sharp pointed stick a big potato and broke it open yes it's done he went on as he saw how mealy and flaky white the potato was even if the outside was burned black then he and uncle wiggily took out some more of the potatoes and when they were cool the two friends put salt on them and ate them all up then the monkey played ball with his coconut again and all of a sudden as he threw the coconut quite high up in the air it came down in the middle of a prickly briar bush then all at once there was a terrible roaring sound and a savage voice cried out from the middle of the bushes hi there who is throwing stones at me then before uncle wiggily or the red monkey could move out sprang the skillery scalery alligator with his double jointed tail right at the red monkey and poor uncle wiggily he rushed and he cried who threw that stone please mr alligator said the monkey it wasn't a stone it was my coconut and i didn't mean to hurt you a coconut eh roared the alligator so much the worse for you i'm going to eat you both here i come get ready and with that he opened his mouth as wide as a big paper bag and fairly jumped for the red monkey oh i'm gone sure this time cried the monkey sadly like 
No, you're not, shouted brave Uncle Wiggily. I'll save you. And what do you suppose that rabbit gentleman did? Why, he just put on a pair of gloves, as quickly as a cat can wash her face on a rainy day. And he reached in the hot ashes, and he pulled out three hot roast potatoes. Then, taking careful aim, he threw one hot potato right into the alligator's open mouth, which was as wide as two paper bags now, ready to eat the red monkey. Oh, wow! cried the alligator, as he felt the hot potato slipping down his throat like a roast marshmallow candy. Wait, I'm not done yet, shouted the rabbit, and he threw hot potato number two down the alligator's throat. Wow, wow! cried the skillery scalery creature as he felt the blistering heat on his forty leven sharp teeth. Wait, I have something more for you, exclaimed Uncle Wiggily, and then with slow and careful aim, he threw hot roast potato number three down the alligator's throat. Wow, wow, wow! yelled the skillery scalery creature and then, fairly boiling inside, he turned a big backward somersault, standing up on the end of his double-jointed tail, and he ran off to find some iced water with which to cool himself. Ha! That's the time you saved my life with the roast potatoes. They were just fine, cried the red monkey. Then he and Uncle Wiggily traveled on, and the alligator didn't bother them any more that day, being so busy drinking iced water. But they had another adventure soon, and I'll tell it to you a little later, when the story will be about Uncle Wiggily and Buddy Pig. That is, if the goldfish doesn't get caught in the mosquito net and tear a hole in it for the June bugs to come in and read the flypaper. End of Uncle Wiggily and the Potatoes Story number 22 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Michael Fascio. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris. Story 22 Uncle Wiggily and Buddy Pig. Uncle Wiggily and the Red Monkey were going slowly along through the woods. It was a day after the alligator had started to eat up the little red monkey but he had to stop when the old gentleman rabbit threw hot roast potatoes down his skillery scalery throat. "'Do you think you'll find your fortune today?' asked the monkey, as he tossed up a stone and caught it as it came down. You see, he had lost the coconut he used to have that time when it hit the alligator. "'Well, I can't say for sure,' replied Uncle Wiggily. "'I hope I may find some gold or diamonds, so I can get rich and go back home.' But you never can tell what is going to happen in this world, not even whether you are going to have an ice cream cone or not. No, indeed, and a stick of peppermint candy besides. I tell you what it is, said the red monkey, slow and thoughtful like, as he scratched his stubby black nose with a piece of straw. I don't believe you have looked in the right places for your fortune, Uncle Wiggily. Why nonsensicalness? exclaimed the old gentleman rabbit. I look in every place I can think of. I look on the ground, and under stones, behind stumps, and down holes, and alongside of rail fences, but I haven't found any gold or diamonds yet. Exactly, spoke the red monkey. But did you ever look up a tree for them? Once I did, said the rabbit. I threw up a stone with some molasses and a string to it to get some gold, but the stone went in an owl's hole, I think. That's all the luck I ever had. Then I'm going to look up some more trees for you, went on the monkey. I am a good climber, and perhaps I may have better luck. Hop along lively now, and maybe we will find your fortune before breakfast. So the two friends went along together, and every once in a while the monkey would climb a tree. The first one he scrambled up was a maple tree, and he hoped he might find some maple sugar hanging on the branches. But it wasn't time for maple sugar. Anyhow... You remember that this kind of sugar comes from the inside of a tree and not the outside. They take the tree juice and boil it in the spring of the year, you know, and that makes maple sugar. The next tree the monkey went up was a hickory nut tree, and there were some nuts on it, but they weren't ripe yet, and when he ate one it was so bitter that he had to make a funny face. And Uncle Wiggily, who was on the ground, happened to see the monkey's funny face, and the old gentleman rabbit laughed so hard that he dropped his valise. The valise came open and out fell a piece of cherry pie, and when the monkey saw this, he laughed. 
He laughed so hard that he shook the tree, and a whole lot of green hickory nuts fell down, and two of them struck Uncle Wiggily on the end of his twinkling nose, making him sneeze forty eleven times. Then the monkey was sorry, and he scrambled to the ground without having found any gold or diamond fortunes. He said he was sorry that Uncle Wiggily was hurt. "'Pray do not mention it,' spoke the rabbit politely. "'It was partly my fault. Let us hurry on.' "'No, let's eat breakfast first suggested the monkey, so they sat down and ate the cherry pie, after brushing off the dirt, and really it wasn't damaged hardly any. Well, then they traveled on again, and the next tree which the monkey climbed was a pine tree, and on it were long pine cones, something like brown bananas, but not very good to eat. The monkey began picking them, and Uncle Wiggily called out, Have you found any fortune for me? No, said the red monkey sadly. I haven't. But we can have a game of baseball with these cones when I come down. Look out, I'm going to toss some to you. Uncle Wiggily got safely out of the way behind a big stone, and the red monkey tossed down a number of the long brown pine cones. And just as the first of them were nearing the ground, a most surprising thing happened. Out from the woods came a big black bear, and he walked toward the tree in which the monkey was, just in time to be hit on the end of his soft and tender nose by the sharp pine cones which the monkey threw. Wow! cried the bear. Who did that? Well, of course, Uncle Wiggily wasn't going to say that he had done it, for he hadn't, so the rabbit just crouched down behind the rock and waited to see what would happen. And the monkey hadn't seen the bear, so he threw down some more pine cones, and land sakes, flopsy dub, and a potato pancake, one of the cones hit the bear on his soft nose again. Wow! Whoa! cried the bear once more. Who did that? And this time he happened to look up, and there he saw the poor red monkey up in the pine tree. Aha! It's you, is it? growled the bear. Now just for that I'm going to climb up there and eat you. Oh, please don't, begged the monkey. It was all a mistake. I didn't mean to do it. Well, there won't be any mistake about this growled the bear. Here I come. And up he climbed, for bears can climb a tree better than can a cat. Well, you can just imagine how scared that monkey was. He was so frightened that he didn't think to run to the top of the pine tree and jump into another so he could get away. Instead, he just sat there on a limb, shivering. And Uncle Wiggily was also frightened as he hid behind the stone. The poor monkey will be eaten up thought the rabbit, and it will be my fault, because he was looking for my fortune. Oh, what can I do? And just then Uncle Wiggily heard a rustling in the leaves at his feet. He jumped back, thinking it might be a little baby bear, but instead out pounced a tiny brown and white chap without any tail. Why, Buddy Pig! exclaimed the rabbit. How does it happen that you're here? I'm just walking about for exercise, said the guinea pig boy, for he it was. But what is the trouble, Uncle Wiggily? The bear is going to eat up the red monkey, said the old gentleman rabbit sadly. Look! Buddy Pig looked, and by this time the bear had almost climbed up to where the monkey was sitting and shivering. Oh, I must stop that, exclaimed Buddy. Wait a minute and watch. You know how I can whistle, don't you? So listen. Now you know all guinea pigs can make a funny squeaky noise just like someone whistling, and that's exactly what Buddy did. He whistled loudly, and he whistled softly through his teeth. Then he whistled double and single, and next he whistled like a man calling to his dog. And that's exactly what the bear thought it was, a man whistling for the dogs to come and bite the bear. Louder whistled Buddy through his teeth, hiding down behind the rock with Uncle Wiggily, and the bear was very much frightened. I guess the dogs are coming for me. The bear exclaimed, and he stopped climbing up the tree. Then he called to the monkey, I'll get you some other time. Then the bear slid down the tree and ran off in the woods, while Buddy whistled louder than ever. And then the monkey came safely down, and he wasn't eaten by the bear after all. And that's all to this story, if you please. The next one will be about Uncle Wiggily and Munchie Trot, the pony boy. That is, if the automobile horn doesn't stick in the lace curtains and scare the fish cakes so that they bite the mashed potatoes. End of story 22
Story 23 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Michael Fascio. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris. Story 23 Uncle Wiggily and Munchy Trot. Weren't you frightened when they were up in the tree and the bear was coming after you? asked Buddy Pig of the red monkey as he and Uncle Wiggily were walking along after the adventure that I told you about last night. Frightened? I should say I was, exclaimed the monkey. I thought I'd never get down again to help look for Uncle Wiggily's fortune. I never can thank you enough for whistling and scaring that savage bear. How do you do it? Oh, it's very simple, said the guinea pig boy as he modestly looked down at the ground. It's this way. Then he whistled through his teeth again, slowly and faster, just to show how it was done. "'I wish I could learn how to do that,' said the monkey. "'If I ever get caught up in a tree again by a bear, I could whistle for myself, and make believe some hunter's dogs were coming to help me.' "'I'll show you,' said Buddy Pig, and he told the monkey how to put his tongue against his teeth and how to blow through his lips. Well, the red monkey tried it, and he tried again, but he couldn't seem to whistle. Perhaps if I stand on my head I could do better, he said, and in a moment there he was standing on his head and trying to whistle upside down, but he still couldn't do it. Try hanging by your tail, suggested Buddy Pig, and the little red chap did so, but still it was of no use. He hung there by his tail so long that Uncle Wiggily was afraid the monkey's head might fall off, so he made him get down. Then the red chap tried again and again, but he couldn't whistle a bit, and at last the old gentleman rabbit said, I believe I know what the trouble is. What? asked Buddy. Why, you see you have no tail, Buddy, and you are a good whistler, went on the rabbit, for you know it's really so, guinea pigs have no tails, though I'm not allowed to tell you the reason just yet. You have no tail, and you are a good whistler, said the rabbit again. But the monkey has a long tail, and he can't seem to whistle a bit. The tail must make all the difference. Just cut off your tail, red monkey, and you'll whistle. Yes, I guess I would, exclaimed the monkey, surprised-like. I'd cry, too, and feel very badly. No, if I have to lose my tail to whistle, I'll never do it. I know what I can do instead. What? asked Buddy Pig. I can hire a green parrot to whistle for me said the monkey. Parrots can whistle for real or make believe dogs as good as a man can. I'll take a parrot with me and he'll scare the bears. Very good, said Uncle Wiggily, for I would not like to see you lose your tail. So the three friends traveled on for some distance until it was time for Buddy Pig to go home. And with him Uncle Wiggily sent his love to all his friends and to Sammy and Lucy Littletail also. "'Well, we don't seem to be finding your fortune very fast,' spoke the red monkey after they had climbed up one hill and part of another one, and had looked under a lot of stones and behind several stumps. "'No, I guess we won't find it today,' said the rabbit. It was now getting on towards afternoon, and Uncle Wiggily began thinking of where he would spend the night. "'I know what to do,' said the red monkey. "'I'll make a little house here in the woods, and we'll stay in that. We'll build a fire.' and make believe we are camping out, and while I am making the house out of sticks and leaves, you can walk around and look for your fortune. Very good, said the old gentleman rabbit. So he started off, leaving the monkey to make the house in the woods. Uncle Wiggily walked on and on, but he didn't find his fortune, and it was getting rather late. He was just about to start back to where he had left the red monkey, when all of a sudden he heard a crying in the woods. Ha! I know what that is exclaimed the rabbit. That is a baby fox, and near him is the old papa fox who wants to catch and eat me. I'll not go near him, but I'll hurry home. So he started towards the monkey's house, but the crying became louder, and the rabbit thought that perhaps, after all, it might not be a baby fox. And then, before he could twinkle his nose more than seven times, there was a rustling in the bushes, and out came a little boy squirrel. One of his legs was broken, and he was limping along on a piece of wood for a crutch. "'Oh, you poor little fellow!' 
cried the rabbit. You look just like Billy or Johnny Bushytail after a football game. What has happened? Oh, a boy threw a stone at me and hurt me, answered the little squirrel. I'm lost and I can't walk home, and I don't know what to do. I'll help you, spoke Uncle Wiggily kindly, but when he tried to, he found that his own rheumatism was so bad that he could hardly move. And the little boy squirrel was so stiff that he could barely walk. And there they were, both in the woods, with night coming on, and no way to get home. Oh, what shall we do? cried Uncle Wiggily, and he wished the monkey would come along. And just then, if you will believe me, there was another rustling in the bushes, and out galloped Munchie Trot, the strong pony boy. Ha! What is the trouble here? he asked, switching his tail, just like the wooden horse on the merry-go-round. Oh, we are both so lame that we can't walk, said Uncle Wiggily. And we are a long way from the monkey's house. What shall we do? Yes, cried the little lame squirrel boy. Boo hoo, hoo boo, what shall we do? Don't say another word, cried Munchie. I'll take care of you. Just get on my back, and I'll soon take you to the monkey's house in the woods. Then the pony boy knelt down so Uncle Wiggily and the squirrel could get up on his back. And when they got there and the cupboard was bare, oh, please excuse me, that belongs in another story, when they got up on Munchie's back and were holding tightly to the saddle, off the pony boy started through the woods, galloping to the monkey's house. Then a whole lot of mosquitoes swarmed out of the bushes and tried to bite Uncle Wiggily and the squirrel, but Munchie switched his tail at the stinging insects, and away they scattered. Then a big owl flew down out of a tree and tried to grab the squirrel, but the pony trotted so fast that the owl was left behind. And next a wolf tried to pull the rabbit off the horse, but Munchie tickled the savage creature in the ribs with his hoof, and the wolf ran away, sneezing. Then the pony came safely to the house that the monkey had built in the woods, and he and Uncle Wiggily and the squirrel stayed there in peace and quietness all night, and they put some salve and a bandage on the squirrel's hurt leg to make it well. And the next day there was another adventure. I'll tell you what it was on the next page, when the story will be about Uncle Wiggily and the green parrot. That is, if the piano key doesn't unlock the front door and let in a red, white, and blue mosquito to bite the baby's toes. End of story 23 Story 24 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris Story 24 Uncle Wiggily and the parrot. Uncle Wiggily was the first one to awaken in the little house that the monkey had built in the woods. It was the morning after the day when Munchie Trot had brought the rabbit and the little squirrel boy home on his back. Well, my rheumatism is somewhat better today, said the old gentleman rabbit to himself, as he stretched out first one leg and then the other to see if they hurt him. He didn't have much pain, so he started to make the fire to boil the coffee, and some of the wood which he put on the fire was wet so that it smoked, and the smoke got up the monkey's nose and made him sneeze, so that he was awakened, and he helped to get the breakfast in a hurry. Then, in turn, Munchie Trot woke up, and next the squirrel boy. His leg hurt him very much, but Uncle Wiggily and the monkey bound it up with some splints and some soft bark, tying it with ribbon grass, and then they all had breakfast and felt better. But how am I to get home? asked the little squirrel boy. My mama and papa will worry about me, I know. Oh, as to that, said Munchie Trot, switching his long tail to keep the flies off the breakfast table, I will take you home on my back. Very good, said Uncle Wiggily, and I will go a little way with you and come back here. Perhaps I may find part of my fortune in that way. That's nice, spoke the red monkey, and I'll stay here and get dinner. And say, Uncle Wiggily, if you happen to see a green parrot, just bring him along to whistle for me. I will, 
promised the old gentleman rabbit. Then he helped the little lame squirrel boy up on the pony's back, and off Munchie started, with Uncle Wiggily hopping alongside. The rabbit looked for his fortune, but he couldn't find it, and pretty soon he had come as far as he thought he ought to go, so he said he would start back. Goodbye, called the lame squirrel boy, and thank you so much for being kind to me. Perhaps you may find your fortune on your way back. Or if you don't find that, spoke Munchie, as he waved goodbye with his long tail, perhaps you will find the green parrot. Then Uncle Wiggily hopped back toward where he had left the monkey getting dinner at the little house in the woods. And just as the old gentleman rabbit was passing under a butternut tree, he heard a voice singing this little song. Oh, I'm a jolly, jolly sailor lad. I sail the ocean blue. And if you're glad and not very bad, I'd like to sail with you. Oh, it's yo-ho-ho ho, when the wind does blow and the waves run mountains high. We will skip along and sing a song beneath the bright blue sky. Oh, once I lived in a big wire cage in a house upon a hill. For birds like me were the style, you see, though I sometimes felt quite ill. I had seeds to eat in a seed dish neat, but they didn't agree with me. So I flew away on a rainy day to live in a greenwood tree. My, that's rather strange, said Uncle Wiggily. I don't see how a sailor lad could live in a cage, nor yet perch in a tree. I must look into this. Perhaps it may be the beginning of my fortune. So he crept along very softly, and there, perched on the limb of a tree, was a nice green parrot, scratching his crooked beak with his left foot. Ha! Huh? How do you do? How are the oysters? Have you been in swimming? Pass the crackers, please. Right this way for your hot ice cream cones, quickly cried the green parrot in a shrill voice. Well, of all things, exclaimed the rabbit. I am pretty well, thank you. But I don't know anything about oysters, and I haven't been in swimming. I don't see any crackers to pass, and as for hot ice cream cones, I never heard of them. Ha ha, laughed the parrot. Never mind me, that was only my joking way, but I'm glad to see you anyhow. I was only fooling about hot ice cream cones. Listen, and I'll whistle a song for you. And then and there, without even wiggling his tail once, he whistled a song called Never drop a penny down a crack in the boardwalk. How did you like that? asked the parrot, as he stood on one leg and stretched out his wings. It was very fine, said the rabbit, and I believe you are just what I am looking for. Will you kindly come and whistle for the monkey so the bears won't catch him? I certainly will, spoke the parrot politely. Show me the way. I am very fond of monkeys. I used to know one who could play five hand organs at once, one with his tail. This is a red monkey, and he is a friend of the hand organ one, said Uncle Wiggily, as he hopped on ahead to show the green parrot the way. Well, pretty soon, not so very long, they came near to the place where the little house was. They heard a curious hissing noise like a steam radiator sissing in cold weather. My, what's that, a snake? asked the parrot in alarm. Uncle Wiggily looked through the bushes, then he laughed. It is only the monkey trying to whistle, said the rabbit, but he can't do it. Poor fellow, spoke the green parrot kindly. I'll whistle for him. And he did so. At first the monkey was frightened, thinking some real dogs were coming at the sound of the whistle. But then Uncle Wiggily and the parrot popped out of the bushes laughing, and they told the monkey who they were, the rabbit explaining that the parrot had come to whistle and scare the bears away. It is very kind of you, said the red monkey, and perhaps in time I may learn to whistle a little myself. 
but come now and have dinner. So the monkey and the parrot and Uncle Wiggily ate their lunch, and in the afternoon they all looked for the old gentleman's fortune, but they couldn't find it. And that night something very strange happened, as they were all sleeping in the little house which the monkey had built in the woods. It was all dark and quiet, when all of a sudden the fuzzy fox sneaked up. He broke open the front window, and he was just crawling in through the hole to eat up the rabbit, when the parrot was quickly awakened by feeling the wind blowing on him through the broken glass. Then he saw the burglar fox, and he whistled for the make-believe dogs, and cried out, Fire! Thieves! Police! Bean soup! Trolley cars! Ice cream cones! Robbers! Get out of here! Take your tail with you! Police! Mud pies! Coconut pudding! Merry-go-rounds! Look out! Fire! Fish hooks! Automobiles! Bang bang! whoop de doodle doo Well, if you believe me, the fuzzy fox was never so frightened in all his life before. He thought a whole lot of soldiers and guns and dogs and police were after him, and he jumped out of the window and ran off as fast as his legs would take him. Then Uncle Wiggily and the green parrot and the red monkey went to sleep again, and there's no more to this story, as you can see for yourself. But in case the umbrella doesn't turn outside in, and scare the spoon holder off the table, and make the napkins jump over the sugar bowl, the next story will be about Uncle Wiggily and the Hippity Hop Toad. End of Story 24「Story number 25 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Wayne Anderson, Chelsea, Quebec. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris. Story number 25. Uncle Wiggily and the Hop Toad. "'Dear me!' exclaimed Uncle Wiggily as he got out of bed the morning after the green parrot had scared away the fuzzy fox. "'I do seem to be having the most surprising adventures, but I can't find my fortune. "'Anyhow, I'm glad we had the parrot with us last night, aren't you, Red Monkey?' "'Indeed I am,' declared the little chap with the long tail. "'And perhaps he will bring us good luck. "'You may come across your fortune at any moment. "'Why don't you go look for it while I take my whistling lesson?' "'Are you going to try again to whistle?' asked the rabbit. "'Indeed I am,' replied the monkey. "'I'm not going to give up just because I can't do a thing the first time or the forty-eleventh time. "'If it's possible for me to whistle, I'm going to learn.' "'Bravo!' cried the parrot, fluttering his green wings. "'That's the way to talk. Well, now, we'll have breakfast, and after that I'll give you a whistling lesson. "'But first I must sing a song.' So he sang this one. Once there was a dolly who could shut her eyes. They were blue like buttercups under summer skies. She had hair like roses and her teeth were red. Sometimes when she walked along she stood on her head. Inside her was sawdust, fine as fine could be, made from sawing little boards that grew in a tree. She could walk on tiptoes and also skip a rope. And every Sunday morning she washed her face with soap. "'My, that was a funny doll with red teeth and hair like roses,' said the monkey. "'I wonder if she was any relation to me.' "'And who ever heard of blue buttercups?' asked the rabbit. "'Buttercups are yellow. Everyone knows that.' "'I know,' said the parrot. "'You see, there really wasn't ever any such dolly. "'I just made that song up as I went along. "'But now for breakfast. Yo-ho! Ho-yo!' "'Well, it was a nice breakfast they all had together "'in the little house the monkey had built.' And when it was over, the parrot started on the whistling lesson. Uncle Wiggily watched the monkey for a time and saw the long-tailed chap turn a double-back somersault when he found he couldn't whistle any other way. But even that didn't seem to do any good. Never mind, said the parrot kindly. You may learn yet. Never give up. I'll not, said the monkey. Well, I think I will go off and see if I can find my fortune, said Uncle Wiggily. I'll come back to dinner. And off he hopped, looking on all sides for gold or diamonds so that he could get rich and go back home and live in peace and comfort. Well, the old gentleman rabbit hadn't gone very far before he came to a place where there was a hole in the ground, and in front of it was a sign which read, Hop down here and get rich. 
Aha! exclaimed the rabbit. Indeed, I'll not do that. There must be a bad fox or a bear down there. I'll keep away. So he hopped on very quickly, and a voice called out after him. Aren't you coming down and get rich? No, I'm not, answered the rabbit, as he looked back and saw a savage mud turtle sticking his long neck and snaky head out of the hole. Then the rabbit kept on, and he went so fast that the turtle couldn't catch up to him. Well, the next place he came to was a little pond of water, and in front of this was a piece of paper on which was written, Jump in here and get rich. Aha! No, indeed, exclaimed Uncle Wiggily, foxy-like. They can't catch me that way. There is probably an alligator in that pond. So away he ran as fast as he could go, and a voice cried after him, Aren't you coming in? And looking back, he saw a big, savage water rat. No, indeed, I'm not coming in, said the old gentleman rabbit, and he hurried on, while the water rat gnashed his sharp teeth because he was so disappointed at not catching the rabbit. Well, the next place Uncle Wiggily came to was a big, bright tin can standing beside the path that led through the woods. Ha! Huh, I wonder what that can be, thought the rabbit. Perhaps there is a sign on it telling me to climb in and get rich. So he looked all around the tin can, but there was no sign. That must be a safe place, thought the rabbit. It may be full of gold or diamonds. I'm going to have a look in. He tried to climb up the sides of the can, but they were too smooth. So he got some long sticks and some short ones, and by tying them together with ribbon grass, Uncle Wiggily made a little ladder. Then, by standing this up against the tin can, he could climb up and look in. When he first looked over the top of the can, he couldn't see anything. Then he leaned away far over, and the first thing he knew, he'd fallen in crisplash and the can was full of molasses. And yes, there poor Uncle Wiggily was in a can of molasses, and he was so stuck up that he didn't know what to do. He tried to swim out, but the molasses was too thick, and he kept sinking deeper and deeper. Oh dear, what shall I do, he cried. I can never get out. And then all of a sudden a voice outside the can called, Who are you, and what is the trouble? Oh, please help me, begged the rabbit. I will, said the voice again. I am the hippity-hop toad, and I'm going to take that can up on my back and hippity-hop up and down with it until I turn all the molasses into molasses candy, and then you can climb out on that. Hold fast, please. Well, Uncle Wiggily held fast, and the first thing he knew, the can in which he was a prisoner gave a lurch and a swaying motion, and then it almost turned upside down, and then he knew it must be up on the back of the hippity-hop toad. Then, my goodness... I wish you could have seen that toad hop. Up and down he went like the dasher in a churn, or like a steam pump. Up and down, up and down, faster and faster. The molasses splashed all over, and some got up Uncle Wiggily's nose, and some in his eyes, and it was all he could do to hold on to the sides of the can, but somehow he managed it. But pretty soon the molasses got thicker and thicker, and then it began to get harder and harder, and pretty soon it was turned into sticks of molasses candy. Then Uncle Wiggily took those candy sticks and made a ladder of them, and when the hippity-hop toad set down the can off his back, the rabbit climbed up the inside of it on his candy ladder, went down his wooden ladder outside the can, and he was safe. Of course, he had lots of spots of molasses on him, but the toad showed him where there was a brook of water in which he washed himself. And then he thanked the hippity-hop toad and went back to the monkey house, though still without his fortune. Now in the next story, in case the mucilage bottle doesn't upset on the doormat and make the letterman stick fast to it so he can't whistle, I'll tell you about Uncle Wiggily and the angleworms. End of story. Recording by Wayne Anderson, Chelsea, Quebec. Story number 26 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Rebecca. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris. Story number 26. Uncle Wiggily and the Worms. Where in the world have you been? asked the red monkey of Uncle Wiggily as the old gentleman rabbit hopped along after he had gotten out of the molasses can. Oh, I had an adventure, replied the rabbit, 
and he told how the hippity hop toad had saved him from the sticky stuff. But can you whistle yet, Red Monkey? asked Uncle Wiggily. Rah, no, he doesn't seem to be able to do it, spoke the green parrot in a sort of sad and hopeless tone. Every time he tries to whistle, he puckers his face up in such a funny way that I have to laugh. And when I laugh, I can't whistle. Can't you keep your face straight so I won't have to giggle? asked the green bird, solemn-like. I can't seem to, replied the monkey, and he made another effort to whistle, but he puckered up such a funny face, and his tail got all tied up in a hard knot, and he looked so queer that even Uncle Wiggily had to laugh. Right, you see how it is, said the parrot. I can't give whistling lessons and laugh at the same time. And then he had to laugh, rah, rah, and oh, oh, because you see, the monkey made another queer face trying to get the knots out of his tail. I think I have a plan, said Uncle Wiggily after a bit. What is it? asked the monkey. You must get behind a tree, red monkey, said the rabbit. Then the parrot can tell you how to whistle and give you lessons without seeing the funny faces you make. Then he can whistle to show you how, and he won't have to laugh. Right, the very thing, cried the parrot. So they tried that way, and they got along quite nicely. Well, by that time it was the dinner hour, and after the meal, Uncle Wiggily said he would go out again to look for his fortune, and would come back to supper. Ooh, ooh, but don't fall into any more molasses cans, cautioned the monkey, and the rabbit gentleman said he would not. Away Uncle Wiggily hopped over the hills, across the fields, and through the woods. Pretty soon he came to a pile of nice brown dirt. Huh, someone has been digging here, thought the rabbit. Perhaps someone else is also looking for a fortune of gold or diamonds. If that is so, I had better dig here too. So, with his sharp paws, the rabbit began to dig in the dirt near the pile of earth. Faster and faster he dug until... All of a sudden, he saw something moving in the hole he had made. Huh, I wonder if there is moving gold here, he thought. But when he looked again, he saw that it was only a little angleworm, or earthworm as some people call them, who was crawling out to sun himself. Oh, I hope I haven't hurt you, exclaimed Uncle Wiggily kindly as he lifted up the worm gently into his paws. Not a bit of it, answered the worm twisting about to see if his tail was all there. But I'm glad you're not a fisherman, Mr. Rabbit. Why so? asked Uncle Wiggily, as he shook some dirt out of his left ear. Because if you were, you might stick me on a sharp hook and toss me into the water for the fish to eat. Nothing is worse than to have a hook stuck into you, said the worm, moving around until he was in two knots. Then he untied himself again. I should think hooks might be unpleasant spoke the rabbit, but I won't hurt you, and here is a bit of cherry pie for you. Thank you most kindly, said the angleworm, as he sat on the edge of his tail and ate the cherry pie, juice and all. But why are you digging in the earth, Uncle Wiggily? To find my fortune, answered the rabbit, and he told how long he had been looking for gold or diamonds, and how he hadn't found any yet. Is there any gold down under the ground where you live? asked the rabbit, sad-like. Not a bit, I'm sorry to say, answered the worm. I live down there with numbers of my friends, but there is no gold. You had better dig somewhere else, but you have been very kind to me, and if ever I can do you a favor, I will. Thank you, said Uncle Wiggily, so he hopped out of the hole he had made, and after saying goodbye to the worm, he traveled on to find another place where he might dig for his fortune. He came to a place in the woods where the ground was nice and soft, and there he started to make another hole. Well, he hadn't gone down very far before, all of a sudden, he heard a growling voice behind him calling out, Here, who said you could dig in my land? Oh, I beg your pardon, is this your land? asked the rabbit, and he looked up to see the skillery scallery alligator glaring down at him. Yes, this is my land and these are my woods, and because you were so bold as to dig here, I'm going to eat you up, shouted the gator, lashing his double-jointed tail around in the dried leaves. Here I come, 
he cried. Then he made a dive with his big, wide-open jaws down into the hole Uncle Wiggily had dug. But the rabbit didn't wait for him. Out he jumped, and away he hopped, and the gator crawled after him. Faster and faster ran the rabbit, and faster and faster came the gator. Oh, I know he'll catch me, thought poor Uncle Wiggily. Oh, help! Will no one help me? he cried. Yes, we'll help you, called the little voice on the ground, and, looking down, the rabbit saw the angleworm, and... Crawling along with him were about a million other worms, some larger and some smaller than he. Run along as fast as you can, said the first angleworm, and we'll twine ourselves in knots around the alligator's legs so that he can't chase you any more. Run! Run! Well, you may be sure Uncle Wiggily ran as hard as he could. I'll get you, cried the alligator, and he made a jump after the rabbit. But it was the last jump the skillery scallery creature made that day. For the next instant, those million angleworms just tied themselves in hard knots, and sailor knots, and bow knots, and double knots, and true lover's knots, and all sorts of knots around the tail and legs of the alligator, and he couldn't move another inch. Now's your chance! Hop away, Uncle Wiggily! cried the first worm. We'll hold the alligator here because you were so kind to me and the rabbit hopped safely away, and the ugly gator couldn't even wiggle his double-jointed tail. Then, when the rabbit was safe at the monkey's house, all the ingleworms untied their knots of the alligator, and they scurried down into the ground before he could bite them. So that's how it all happened, just as true as I'm telling you. And the gator was so angry that he almost bit a piece out of his own tail. Then he went off into the woods and wasn't seen again for some time. But this wasn't the last of Uncle Wiggily's adventures, no indeed. In case the fish hook doesn't catch the baseball and make the lamp chimney all smoky, I'll tell you next about Uncle Wiggily and the black beetle. End of story number 26. Recording by Rebecca. Story number 27 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Rebecca. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris. Story number 27. Uncle Wiggily and the Beetle. One beautiful sunshiny day, when the wind was blowing through the treetops, making music like a church organ many miles away, Uncle Wiggily awakened in the little house which the red monkey had built for him in the deep woods. Well, I'm going to make another search for my fortune this morning, he said as he wiggled his whiskers to get the dried leaves out of them, for he had slept on a bed of leaves, you know. I'll go with you, said the red monkey because the last two or three times you went off by yourself, you got into trouble. Trouble? I should say I did, exclaimed the old gentleman rabbit. Well, there was a time you fell into the can of molasses, and the hippity-hop toad had to jump up and down with it on his back until it was made into sticks of candy, said the red monkey. True enough, spoke Uncle Wiggily. And there was the time when the skillery scallery alligator chased you, went on the red monkey and the angleworms tied themselves into knots around his legs to stop him. Do you remember that? Indeed I do, said the old gentleman rabbit, and I will be very glad to have you come along with me and help me. We will start right after breakfast. So the two friends built a little campfire in front of the wooden house in the woods, and they cooked some oatmeal and some carrots and turnips, and Uncle Wiggily made a cherry pie with plenty of red juice in it. And the monkey found a bag of peanuts under a chestnut tree, and he roasted them for his breakfast. Then they started off. On and on they went for the woods, over the hills, up one side and down the other, around the corner, where a big gray rock rested on some green moss, and then, all of a sudden, there was a queer noise up in the air. It was like wings fluttering and a voice calling. And the voice said, Is the red monkey down there? Oh, my! I wonder who can want you, said Uncle Wiggily. Maybe it's the bear who once climbed up a tree after me, cried the red monkey. I'm going to hide. 
so he crawled under a big, broad leaf. Then once more the voice called, I want the red monkey! Oh, please, Uncle Wiggily, don't let him get me, begged a shivering and shaking monkey. Throw a stone at that bear, will you? Huh, hmm, exclaimed the old gentleman rabbit. I don't very well see how it can be a bear. Bears don't fly in the air, for they have no wings. I'll take a look. So he looked up in the air, and then, instead of a bear flying overhead, it was only Dicky Chip Chip, the little sparrow boy. Well, bless me, cried Uncle Wiggily. What are you doing up there, Dicky? Oh, I'm making believe I'm a messenger boy, said the sparrow. I have a telegram for the red monkey. Oh ho, so that's why you wanted me, is it? asked the long-tailed chap as he crawled out from under the leaf. What is the message about, if you please? Here it is, spoke Dicky, and then from under his wing he took a piece of white coconut with writing on it. And no sooner had the red monkey read it than he began to cry. What's the matter? asked Uncle Wiggily. Oh dear, sobbed the red monkey. My little brother who works on a hand organ nearby had his tail cut off by getting it twisted around the handle. He is very sick and I must go home right away. Oh, how sorry I am. And then the red monkey ate up the piece of coconut that had the message written on it. You had better go home at once said Uncle Wiggily. But I don't want to leave you, said the red monkey. Oh, I will get along all right, spoke the brave old rabbit gentleman. Go ahead, and when your brother is well, come back. I will, promised the red monkey, as he started for home. And I'll fly on ahead to tell them he is coming, said Dicky Chip Chip. So they both called goodbye to Uncle Wiggily and hurried away for the woods while the rabbit gentleman kept on in search of his fortune. And now for the black beetle. Uncle Wiggily was walking along under a green tree, looking for some gold or diamonds when, all of a sudden, something jumped out of the bushes and grabbed his crutch away from him. Then Uncle Wiggily saw that it was a wolf, and the wolf sprang down into a big hole in the ground, taking the crutch with him. Now, called the wolf, showing his ugly teeth, if you want your crutch, Mr. Rabbit, you'll have to come down this hole after it. Come on down. But Uncle Wiggily knew better than that, for just as surely as he jumped down into that hole, the wolf would have eaten him all up. And the rabbit didn't know what to do, for he couldn't walk without his crutch on account of being lame with the rheumatism. Oh, this is terrible, cried the rabbit. Whatever shall I do? I can't stay in these woods forever. And just then there was a rustling in the leaves, and out walked a big, black, pinching beetle. In front of his head he had two things just like fire tongs, or a crab's claws, with which to pinch. What is the trouble? asked the black beetle politely. The wolf, down the hole, has my crutch, and he won't give it to me, said the rabbit. Ha! We will very soon fix that, spoke the beetle. Just tie a string around me, Uncle Wiggily, and lower me down into the hole. Then I'll pick up the crutch in my strong pincers, and you can haul me up again as I hold fast to it. But the wolf may get you, said the rabbit. I'll fix that wolf, replied the beetle, winking his two little eyes real jolly-like. So Uncle Wiggily tied a string around the black insect and lowered him down into the hole. The wolf saw him coming and cried out, Oh! You can't get this crutch, for I'm sitting on it, and I'll bite you. Just you watch, spoke the black beetle, winking one eye this time. So he looked down, and, surely enough, the wolf was sitting on the crutch. But the beetle knew a good trick. He swung himself around on the edge of the string, which the rabbit held, and, as he got near the wolf, the beetle suddenly pinched the savage creature on the tail. Oh my, ouch, cried the wolf, and he jumped up in a hurry. And that was just what the beetle wanted, for now he could reach the crutch as the wolf was not sitting on it any more. In his strong pincers he took hold of it. Pull me up, called the beetle to the rabbit, and Uncle Wiggily did so, crutch and all, by the string, and they left the wolf down in the hole as angry as a mud pie. 
So that's how the beetle got back the rabbit's crutch for him. And that's the end of this story. But there will be another one soon. About Uncle Wiggily and Kitty Cat. That is, if the puppy dog across the street doesn't chew a hole in the milk bottle and scare the Iceman all to pieces so that he goes roller skating with the jumping rope. End of story number 27. Recording by Rebecca.